Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Danielle Dongmo Godfrey, and she's CEO over at Set Apart Accountancy Corp. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. I'm happy to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you here as well. I know that you were referred over to us. We've been covering the reggae and crowdfunding conference that the the Deal Flow guys, Charlie and Philip over there have been are are throwing and it's gonna be taking place actually this week and so big things happening there. And I understand that you're gonna be attending and also you're gonna be participating on a panel. Am I off on that? Yes, correct. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit more about the panel and what you'll be talking about. Yes, we will be talking about going from a Rec CF to a Rec A, mm-hmm. which mainly under equity crowdfunding and the strategy to raise funds through Rec CF and how do we go from 5 million to 75 million and beyond. Yeah. That's amazing. And let's just get this interview kicked off a little bit more. Let's go a little bit further back in your career. Like, when did you start getting interested in this, in crowdfunding and, and just in this niche in general? Where did that take place for you? It took place in 2018 when I first started my company, Set of Fact Accountancy mm-hmm. Cup. I was building my company while looking of for a job on the side. And then mm-hmm. I posted my resume and on a headhunter website and start engine reach out to me and mm-hmm. they asked me if I knew how to put financial statement together for a crowdfunding campaign. And I said yes and said they were really interested in me, in my resume, in my background and they scheduled me for an interview and I went and it went really well. And I started helping issuers with putting their financial statement together from zero to 107, 107,000 target. Yeah, so that's how I started. So I was helping those issuers prepare their financials. When back in the days, from zero to 107,000, the company did not need a financial statement review, just a mm. CEO certified financial. And then a lot of issuers have done no financial statement. They're more like very creative about the businesses, about the idea. So they brought me in and I was assisting those issuers with that, putting, and in the process of that, the issuers really liked me and were saying great things about me. Oh, she's really good. She's responsive. She's quick and start ending took notes. And then they ask me, hey, do you know how to do financial review? And I say, yes. You know, and I got a business partner on board. And together, we were doing the financial statement review. This Back in the days for issuers now wanted to raise above 107. Mm. The limit has since increased. Anyway, and from there, it went to an audit. And from there, we other crowdfunding platforms found us. And mm. on the SEC, and the rest is history. We just really blew up. So that's how I got into crowdfunding. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me about the, like what? So it's interesting to me because that's pretty early on, 2019, in terms, of, and it's still early on for everybody. Like it's still, in my opinion, like many many people still don't know the extent at which is it exists. And like, I think that's why a conference like the one that you're going to is amazing and that you'll be presenting to is to give, to give people the tools to understand and to be able to make that determination of if it makes sense for them, right? Whether they're issuers or whether they're even supporting the industry as service providers, right? So maybe now your, your vantage point, as I said, like you've been, you've been doing this for a while now, what's interesting to you in the industry right now, like, like present day and for context for everybody that's listening, we're recording this in June of 2024. So what's interesting to you right now in crowdfunding? Like what excites you? You know, what excites me about crowdfunding first is always seeing new companies go on and reach their targets in terms of capital needed. So that's very exciting every time they reach their their capital and how quickly they do it for some of them. 
And then what also is exciting is how crowdfunding is really gaining popularity. More people learning about it. Like just recently, a friend of mine found out I was speaking and she was like, oh, crowdfunding, what is, <laughs> you know? So yeah, a lot of people are learning about crowdfunding. It's, getting it's true. Even because- though it's been around for a little while, I completely agree with you. People yeah. will, still, will still surprise me when I'm in. I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't know that was a thing or that's an alternative? And people are like, no, I just thought that. <laughs> Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. I agree with you though. Yes, yes, exactly. So I believe that the market that is still very huge for crowdfunding. Mm. That's how we allow an accredited investor to invest and it make it really simple for, for anyone uh, to invest. So mm-hmm. I really believe that it's, it has a lot of potential. There is a lot of potential. This is great time for crowdfunding. Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen so many campaigns. I mean, you've been in the business for a while. You've seen a lot of action. Talk to me a little bit more about what you've seen like works in terms of a, or what are some of the good characteristics of planning and launching a good crowdfunding campaign that you've seen? Obviously understanding that no two campaigns are going to be identical, but what are some of the good characteristics and traits to launching? That's a great question. I would say one of the preparation, being really prepared is is really key in launching a crowdfunding campaign and also building awareness about your product or services, crafting a compelling story, Mm -hmm. compelling narrative, articulating your mission, your vision, and your growth potential, and engaging with the audience who pitch videos and, and, and building a strong online presence a leveraging influencer, which all of that goes on the marketing. So making sure you qualify for crowdfunding and selecting the right platform and just making sure that you have all your documents together because all of that you will need from incorporation, all of that, your debt agreement, everything regarding your financial needs to be in order. So yeah, I think that, yes, it goes down to preparation and, and, and marketing and just making sure that you qualify because companies go through due, due diligence and approve, uh, when they go through crowdfunding platforms, they should make sure they don't have any down or bad actors, companies. So that's a, That actually leads me to the next question. Are there any like just uh-huh. big pitfalls, like things that are kind of, and obviously there's going to be variations, but just things mm-hmm. that you know, kind of kill crowdfunding campaigns from the beginning, even that that could have been avoided. You know what I mean? Like those obvious things that you just don't know. And if you're not working with the right team or otherwise, like what are some of those obvious pitfalls? Yes, the obvious pitfall, what I've seen a lot is issuer not make doing their due diligence regarding mm. the right platform, for instance, and then I down the line, oh, I didn't know all of these, you know, <laughs> yeah. you didn't tell me. I was not aware of these fees. I was not aware of all these process, of mm. all these documentation. And I, we literally have a client that stopped his crowdfunding, like, in the middle. He was so mad and just decided that he was going to do a video to denounce the platform. But had he done his due diligence and and read reviews and to make some to pick the right platform that fits with the company culture he will have avoided that and i i think that it has to do with that and also having the right team in all those areas the right Mm. people and really engaging the investors uh like having Sometimes even having a pre-launch help, you know, using social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and engaging, speaking to friends, family, colleagues, like all of that is helpful. So like kind of testing the market is, is really helpful and reading stories of companies that have been successful Uh, that have done great and what set them apart, really helpful to avoid all those pitfalls. I think lack of preparation and also lack of finances to to get to launch because it takes a lot of 
demands a lot from putting the financials, doing a review, if an audit to having a lawyer to help through the whole process to make sure that all the required documents are in place to file. All of that is very expensive. That's without counting the platform fee. So having a budget and assessing how much is needed and be prior to launching and also determining the strategy to launch. Are we going to do a VEC CF campaign from zero to 500,000 or are mm-hmm. we going to from there go to other uh, to 1.235 and then from there go above? So all of that is important, having a strategy in place. Mm. You mentioned something earlier, and I just want to kind of circle back to it a little bit here because it's one of those things that I, I talk about this all the time, and I'm in media, right? So that's what I do. Mm-hmm. But hearing it come from someone like yourself who's in finance and raising capital just kind of reinforces the point, I feel, for not just myself, but for our audience as well. You mentioned having a great narrative or a great story to tell. Like, Talk to me a little bit more about that and why that's so important. Yes, I believe that's very important because like that, so many people would do what you do. Like why in media, there's so many businesses out there. It has never been this easy to start a business. And a lot of business needs capital. A lot of business in your line, probably in the line of industry that most mm-hmm. other businesses are, because once something is competitive, everybody wants it something is successful, everybody yep. wants to do it. So mm-hmm. having a compelling story is very important because it's through your compelling story that people can identify what sets your business apart. What is your unique value and what problem do you solve? What, what differentiates you from the competition and how do you add value to the investor? How do you add value to the customers? How do you add value? So, it's very important to captivate the investor interest and to motivate them to support your venture. That's why it's so important crafting that story. Yeah, I love it. And, I, and I'm a big fan of that too. And I, I think mm-hmm. like exactly what you're saying, like it, what's going to differentiate you from someone else, the story, yeah. the founder's story, the, and that's why we're so passionate. And I'm so passionate about, about bringing individuals like yourself on who are, who started companies and who are, you know, doing that day in and day out to tell their story and, and their mission and to provide that platform. So uh, I'm obviously a big fan of doing that. That being said, Danielle, if somebody's listening to this and they are watching this and they'd like to follow up and learn more about your work over at Set Apart Accountancy Corp or follow your journey in general, how do people connect and how do they follow? Yes, people can connect through our company website, setupatfs.com, or find me on LinkedIn, Danielle Domo in LinkedIn, even send me an email, Danielle at setupatfs.com. Amazing. And for everybody listening, just so you know, we'll put that the links to the website in the show notes and all that good stuff. So you can just click on the link and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't done it yet, definitely hit that subscribe or follow button. We have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Danielle, again, thank you so much for making some time for us today and good luck with your panel and with everything else. I'm sure you're going to knock them out over at the conference. So I really enjoyed our time together. And again, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.